Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Zeus Republic of Gamers Zephyrus Duo 15 GX550. This is a seriously beefy gaming laptop that will set you back around £4,000 and the same amount in dollars. Now, this is the 4K variant that sports a Intel Core i9 10980HK CPU, an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Super graphics card, 32 gig of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM and a 2 terabyte NVMe drive as well as a number of other highlights that include that secondary screen 13 inch secondary touchscreen display that supports 3840 by 1100 pixels and the main screen itself is a 4K G-Sync compatible, 100% Adobe RGB, Pantone validated panel that has a 60 hertz refresh rate. So as you can see, some serious specs on this machine and some interesting highlights to it. And I will be going through all the different bits, including the highlights and the lowlights as I unbox and show off this gaming laptop and go into a bit more in-depth review that includes a number of painful downsides that aren't just the price because that price is a lot of money but you are paying for a premium machine with some very nice specifications and a lot of power but there are some daft design quirks for example it doesn't have a webcam which in 2020 seems a bit insane to me especially in a world where everybody is doing video conferencing video calls and getting online and streaming There's no webcam on a four thousand pound machine seems like a oversight and um, one that Azus keeps making recently because they also did it in the smaller laptop that I reviewed as well that was a lot cheaper but also didn't have one and I know why because obviously keeping the screen as bezel free as possible to make it as tasty looking as they can. Now the machine itself comes in a rather snazzy box as it should for this amount of money and also comes with all the usual gump that you'd expect but also has in the box a Dying Light 2 redemption pass that you can use later on when the game actually launches. Now this is interesting because that is one of the pitches for the secondary display. That is a touchscreen display as I said but it's meant to be able to show you off various things and be used for productivity reasons and I'll talk to you a bit more about that later on but as he says it will also support a number of games in that certain things from the games, elements from games like Dying Light 2 for example, will be designed by the game developers to appear on that secondary screen so it doesn't take up space on your main display but will be there constantly to serve a uh, use when in game so for example simple things like a mini map might appear down there or your inventory system or something like that and Dying Light 2 is one of the games that will support it hence including that in the box the display can also be used for other things like multitasking and various other things that I'll talk to you about in a minute. As you see, it also comes with a rather chunky power brick. Battery life is something I will quickly mention here because that is another niggle of this machine. £4,000 only gets you about two hours of battery life before you need to plug in. And that's because of the sheer power of the beast. Even with battery settings optimised within the software, brightness turned down, RGB backlighting turned off and other things, you can't get much battery life out of it at all. And I've seen this in the past with other thin powerful gaming laptop so it's not a surprise to me but it might be an annoyance to you that you quickly find you have to plug it in to charge it but then you have to plug it in to game with it as well if you want to get the best possible experience so that is what it is basically at the end of the day now this is a very nice looking laptop as you'll see as it's coming out and it has a number of mini highlights to it, uh, one of which is quite simply this included wrist rest. Very nice, very floppy rubber wrist rest that is a small highlight to the design. And the reason I like that wrist rest is because this laptop comes with a forward slung front facing keyboard layout similar to the Zephyrus S that I reviewed previously they've moved the trackpad uh, to the side and the keyboard to the front which means keys sit right at the front of the machine this is quite unusual to get used to if you've not experienced it before but the benefit is 
It means they can put the intake fans nearer the monitor and away from you, but suck cold air in from the top and then blow out the hot air from the sides, which essentially means that it can keep cooler and run quietly during gaming sessions. And that is one of the highlights of this machine that I'll show off a bit later on, is that it runs really quietly. As these claims, 43 decibels is the maximum amount of sound you get out of it on performance road, which is where the fans are spinning quite quickly. So you don't get overpowered by the fan noise and that is a real highlight for me because the number of thin gaming laptops that I've tested where the fans are so loud that you just have to put a headset on as soon as you can is just incredible and this one that problem does not exist uh, the speakers on it are substantial enough to get rid of any noise like that anyway but the fans themselves are also quiet however that is not without its own drawbacks and I will talk to you about that a bit later on and show you what I mean too. Now as I said this is the 4k variant there is also a 1080p 300 hertz refresh rate 3 millisecond response time panel option a cheaper more affordable variant of this laptop and that will obviously get you better frames per second. Frames per second is something that I'm going to talk to you about a bit later on and I'll show off some more of gaming sessions that I had with it. I found a really mixed experience with this to the point that it's worth noting that I had to send this one back that you're seeing coming out of the box because the performance was so bad that Azus thought that I probably had a defective model and that's with all the drivers, BIOS updates, uh, Windows updates, everything installed. I found I was getting about 30 frames per second on games that I definitely shouldn't have been like Cuisine Royale which usually tops out around 80 or 90 even on lower end PC so it was very surprising to see a £4,000 laptop struggling with that game and other games where Azus had done their benchmarkings and said that it should get 60 or more FPS, I was getting 30, so there was something wrong initially with this. So if you do find problems, that might be it, potentially, but that was a bit disconcerting for me, I'll be honest. However, the second model they sent didn't have as many issues, but there were some. Now, when you open up the flap, you'll see that the secondary screen lifts up and then you can see the intake fans underneath that. So it's an interesting design on the Zephyrus S before, when that secondary screen wasn't there, you just had the intake fans at the top and that was suck air in. Now they're hidden behind the screen, which is nice. You'll note that 13 inch screen lifts up so that you can see it as well. So you have access to just be able to look at it and use it a bit more productively. However, I will note that I don't think that lifts up high enough and you'll see this a bit later on. It doesn't tilt quite far enough to be super useful. You can still see it, but depending on how you sit, you might find it's a bit of an issue. You'll see also uh, warnings to keep clear from that point because you don't want to trap your fingers in there and obviously it gets hot in that area too. On the left hand side you have the power port and a headphone and microphone jack and on the right hand side you have two USB-A connectors and a USB-C connector. I'll leave all the specifications in the description. It's worth noting that USB-C port also supports DisplayPort. If you have a DisplayPort USB-C adapter you can use DisplayPort cable there because on the rear there is only an HDMI output for this laptop. So you can output to multiple screens but you will note there's an Ethernet connection, another USB connection and the HDMI connection on the rear. So it is possible to output to a monitor, but it's a bit of a surprise not to see a DisplayPort mini connection But then I had a DisplayPort to USB-C adapter so you could do it that way. It's uh, Type-C, also has Thunderbolt 3 and power delivery in that way. The machine itself is a very nice looking, well-crafted bit of kit as you'd expect for this amount of money. A very nice looking device. Here you can see on the right hand side the side slung trackpad. I like that design because it doesn't get in the way as much as a standard trackpad does. You don't have to turn it off all the time because it's not in the way. It's on the right hand side. It feels a bit more natural. It's kind of like a mouse. Obviously not for gaming because it's very narrow, but for everyday use it's easy to access and satisfying to use. Here you can see some close-ups of that secondary screen and just how little tilt there is. It's not a terrible amount of tilt on there at all so I really find, I mean at this angle it looks fine but when you're just sitting down and using it whether it's on your lap or on the desk it's not ideal. The keyboard itself as you can see is backlit 
RGB backlighting and that's per key illumination. All of that's customizable within the ASUS Armoury Crate software, which is included. There's also an app you can download and connect this laptop to that to then access various settings. I found that app a bit finicky. I've seen the same problems in the past with other ASUS models of the same sort of support. On the trackpad, there's also a button to turn it off and on into numpad mode, so you can use it as a numpad. So you're basically transforming that keyboard into nearly a full-blown keyboard if you want easy access to be able to enter into your digits and numbers into various things and you can do it this way obviously it's only a touch one you have no tactile feedback from that in any way but it's a nice addition and i really liked that in the previous models and i again here the keyboard itself is comfortable to use and you'll see a number of other keys on the top simple highlights something like the fan adjustment there's an easy access button on f6 to access the snipping tool you can access the lighting for both the keyboard and the screen brightness from this by just pressing the function key you can also obviously change between the various lighting modes with a couple of presses of the function button and the directional arrows as well so you've gotten a reasonable amount of access to various basic settings without even launching Armoury Crate, which is nice. In terms of the RGB lighting as well, pretty decent. It does a good job of lighting up. You can see here a night shot with most of the lights turned off and it still looks pretty good. In terms of aesthetics, the Duo 15 is a pretty nice looking laptop really at the end of the day. It's understated, it's not too garish. It's not as in your face as something like the Scar 3 that I reviewed previously that had under lighting around the edges. There was an RGB lighting panel, it was basically lighting up the bottom and around the sides. And you could probably get away with using it in an office. And in terms of productivity, obviously that secondary screen offers a lot, potentially, depending on how you want to use it. Because it's touch sensitive, you can draw on it, you can just tap and touch on it. I've done things like dropping Skype calls into it, having browsers in there. I've put Discord in there, I've got uh, Twitch chat, had OBS Streamlabs chat running in there so I could see and respond to the audience on Twitch and things like that. My main use for it though has been putting the Armoury Crate soft software down in there and that's because you can see and easily access the various settings and tweak them. You can also monitor the performance of the computer and how much heat is it's generating how hot the GPU and CPU are getting, uh, the fan speed and things like that. You can also, as I said earlier, adjust the fan speed from the keyboard itself. So the function key and F5 goes between the various speeds. When it's not plugged in, you only get Windows, Silent and Balanced mode. When you plug into the mains, you then get Performance and Turbo mode. Uh, those are obviously louder but they deliver a better performance and focus on GPU and CPU performance and giving you the best possible results. Azus recommends using turbo mode for your gaming sessions and for any benchmarking you want to do as that enables Nvidia's dynamic boost technology and squeezes the most performance out of the laptop while also keeping noise down. You also note within Armoury Crate that you can do things like adjust Aurora Sync and also change game visuals and Game First and Sonic Studio. Now game visuals I really like because it basically changes between the various settings on the fly on the screen itself. So you can do things like change between FPS, RTS, racing and eye care, which is something that I really like because that takes the blue out of the screen and makes it easier on the eye when you're working on it during the day. So it makes it less taxing on your eyeballs. Obviously, Game First prioritizes your gaming and then the Sonic Studio changes the audio. Now, as I said previously, the speakers on this thing are decent and they really deliver a very loud sound. I don't think they're as rich or as enjoyable as a good high quality gaming headset. However, this thing does have high res audio and an ESS Sabre Hi-Fi DAC built into it so it does deliver pretty good sound and that sonic studio allows you to change between various soundscapes as well and that is noticeable actually when it's off the laptop's a lot quieter and when you turn it on you can really hear the sound difference 
So there are loads of different ways to use that extra panel, but my favorite one is the armory crate, but you can access all sorts of things in there. Various different software could have toolbars that will go in there, and obviously you could expand the window and drag it down into there as well to make it longer so that you could access, for example, the toolbar with an video editing software and see the timeline if you're editing video and other things. Now on to gaming performance. Now, as I said, I had problems with this initially with the device and uh, the Assassin's Creed as is claims on ultra on 4k on ultra high settings you should be able to get around 60 FPS the first one I just was getting 30 which is obviously a problem and uh, that was with turbo on plugged in all the drivers updated windows updates and everything so we sent it back and they sent me another model and I still didn't see that much of an improved performance it's getting around between 40 and 50 FPS on the settings. Um, smooth experience and it looks fantastic. As you can see, this video is taken at night and it's really bright. And that's one thing I really like about this screen. 4K screen obviously looks fantastic. Only 60 Hertz refresh rate and there's no HDR or anything like that, but it does look great. And it is bright enough to use outside as well. I use outside regularly working in such and found that even in broad daylight, it was still a wonderful panel, really easy to use and no problems. Another thing that I will note is that you can turn off the secondary display. There's a button on the keyboard low. You can turn that screen off so that you can probably get more performance out of the machine. I tried it, made a minimal amount of difference turning that off because obviously you've not got the game on both screens anyway, so it's not that taxing, but it is an option. So if you find you in a situation where you just want to concentrate on one screen and not use it, then you can do that. Obviously you can also output to a different screen with the HDMI or display port, and I'll show you that a bit later on, and I actually notice some performance benefits of doing so. And you don't have to run up ultra settings or 4K, you go 1080p, you could just use 4K for work or whatever you want to do, and then switch to 1080p for gaming. But for me, I like the uh, option of that 4K screen. I just found that with some of the games I tried, I was expecting to see better performance. On my main desktop rig, I've got a 4K display and I was getting 20 or 30 FPS less on similar games. Assassin's Creed, Far Cry New Dawn, Cuisine Royale, as I said, a, a variety of games that I tried and I noticed a dip in performance. And considering the amount of money you're paying, you expect to see better performance than this. Your experience may vary. Obviously it's gonna vary slightly between machine, the drivers that are released at the time, the software updates, the settings that you'll run, the environment you're playing in and such. It was a smooth experience, but if you look at the FPS counter, you'll see I'm only in the low 40s here, 50s in Far Cry New Dawn. So Far Cry New Dawn, as you can see, I run benchmarks through both these games as well. And the average FPS was about that same level, around 40 or 50 FPS just between there. So not mind blowing. However, I didn't let that distract from the fact that it was thoroughly enjoyable laptop to play on and it looks really nice as you can see from multiple angles that screen looks fantastic it's a 15.6 inch screen that has very narrow bezels and it has really good color representation and looks great as i said earlier on it's pantone validated and 100 percent adobe rgb as well uh, g-sync capable and so the result is a very crisp nice looking screen probably not the best I've seen. I actually preferred Alienware's M15 for that, but it still looked good. FPS counter demonstration in the top corner here. So this is Far Cry New Dawn running at maximum settings, around 50 FPS there, running around playing on it. One thing you will notice, you'll hear the background audio as I'm playing here ever so slightly. And uh, that was one of the highlights, as I said, is that the fan noise actually isn't overpowering the speakers. You can hear the fans humming slightly, but they were nowhere near as loud as other laptops I've tested. And that has almost certainly been one of the bonuses. And to put that to the test, I actually have a sound level meter that I'll show you in a minute. And I wanted to test what the sound levels got to for this laptop in terms of the speakers versus the fan noise because the fan noise has always been a bother on laptops but I actually found that I could play f with this one for a long time and not had any issues with getting fed up with the sound. 
little snippet of cuisine royale here for you to enjoy. Be sure to check out my channel, it's got loads of cuisine content because I find it hilarious and it's a lot of fun to play. I also streamed with this laptop using that and it was good too. Now here you can see a sound level meter and it shows with the speakers on maximum was getting in the high 80s in terms of the decibels. Very loud, very good sound. Not as rich as a gaming headset, but still fantastic for getting rid of that audio from the, the fans and delivers a good quality still too. Pretty good for music and movies and other things as well. And it does a good job. Now the other problem that I've had with this is heat. The top of it, as you see here, I've got a level meter to show what the temperature is, and it's around somewhere in the 30s after a long gaming session, not too bad. The ROG Armory Crate software is showing the CPU and GPU temp somewhere around the 70s, uh, 70 degrees centigrade, not too bad. But one thing that I did notice is that when I was playing on my lap with this thing, it was very hot underneath, very hot. And I tried also gaming on my desk, and got the same results. Now, you wanted to use this temperature sensor just to show you. At the top, in the rear, 50 degrees centigrade. Uh, very hot, insanely hot. It doesn't have the same problem along the sides, so uh, the edges and the middle at the front isn't too bad, somewhere in the 30s, but uh, yeah, very hot back there. Now, I actually had a situation where I was working on a laptop and I put it down on the sofa in my living room, actually on this footstool here that you can see, and left it for a, minute, a little while and went off to do something else, came back to it, sat down with it, and it was even hotter. It burnt my legs a little bit, and I quickly tested it, and it was actually 60 degrees centigrade, which was insane. So to test it again, I strapped on the Oculus Rift S, plugged it in with the adapter that I mentioned earlier on, because that's DisplayPort requirement for uh, Rift S. So you have to use DisplayPort rather than HDMI, but it does work with VR. So that's a confirmation if you're wondering whether this laptop will work with a VR headset. Yes, it will. And it ran really well. Played a bit of Beat Saber here and that wasn't a problem. I also left it on the footstool again because I wanted to retest and see whether I could make it get that temperature. Because obviously yeah, keeping cool is a good thing and it does seem to keep cool internally and performance didn't seem to suffer when it got hot but it did get really hot and if you're gaming on your lap I found it was just unbearable most of the time not just because it burnt my legs but also because it just gets you really hot in the winter it'll probably be quite nice but it, up to 60 degrees in the middle of the rear is a problem for me it's not so much if you're gaming on the desk you don't feel the heat coming through the keyboard you don't feel it on that secondary screen you don't feel it blowing out the sides onto your hands but i just really felt it when gaming on a lap now demonstrate what it's like to output a game to a different screen so here i am playing death stranding on a 1440p 34 inch screen HDMI cable. I actually found the performance here was good. I was getting around 90 FPS with everything maxed out in this game and it looked a lot better. I also ran Assassin's Creed on here and noticed about 10 to 15 FPS extra. So obviously it's a lower resolution at 1440p. 3440 by 1440 so it's not quite the same as 4K. Um, but it actually ran with more frames per second on an external monitor than it did on the laptop itself. So if you do find you're suffering, so you can drop down to 1080p or you can output to a different screen perhaps and do it that way and you'll still get a good experience. So there you have it, basically a summary of what it's like to use. It's a very nice laptop, it's great for productivity it's quite nice having that secondary screen. Obviously it's not the same as having an external monitor and it's not the same as having two 15 inch screens, but having that secondary display down there does allow you to do various things when you're gaming, whether it's seeing what your friends are saying in Discord, keeping an eye on Twitch chat, uh, watching out for Skype messages, Slack, have even having a browser down there i watched youtube videos down there you can control spotify down there and things without getting in the way of the main screen so there's lots of different customization options in terms of that otherwise it's great in all other lots of other areas sound is great the screen is fantastically bright really good color representation great for gaming fps is 
a bit rubbish on the 4K model, unfortunately, especially for this amount of money. And there are other niggles too. As I said, lack of webcam is just incredible. The USB ports are on the right-hand side only, so they get in the way of the mouse. There isn't any on the left. I feel like it'd be a niggle as well. But otherwise, it's a great bit of kit. Be sure to check out the description for all the specifications and other information you need, as well as links to the official site, as well as a few more notes that I might make around the features and highlights. Hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, or hilarious. Be sure to subscribe and check out these other videos as well as taking a look in the description for links and information you might find useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see extra about this. And have a great life.